Talak, talak. Ah, ah, ah. India has one of the lowest divorce rates globally. This is estimated to be around 1%. So you must be thinking, Sharon, what's even the point of this video? Well, let me tell you. Divorce is still a taboo subject in this country. Most people stay separated but do not file for divorce. So in reality, the numbers are much higher. According to the UN, divorce rates have almost doubled in India over the past two decades. So let us say your neighbor Nibi just left you and shattered your heart to pieces. Now you want to get back at them. Well, that is not the right way of looking at things. But I can teach you how to get back at them financially. We talk about everything. All the way from property distribution to child support. We'll also talk about some bonus tips at the end of the video. So make sure you watch till the end. And if you're getting one right now, make sure to send me a DM on Instagram. What is this script? What is this? Okay. So first, let's talk about the different types of divorce. That's right, there are actually types of divorce. So the first type is divorce by consent. When people say something's mutual, it never is. And the second one is divorce by contest. In the first type, both you and your partner have realized that shit has hit the fan and decide to get a divorce. Absolutely. So divorce by mutual consent basically involves you and your partner sitting together and discussing all the terms and conditions of your divorce, such as child custody, maintenance, who gets the house and all of that stuff, and then filing a joint petition in the court. The mutual agreement makes settling of finances and legalities much more quicker and easier because both of you want to get rid of each other quickly. In case you decide to go to a court, it can take up to two weeks. And if you decide to go through a mediator, it can take up to 60 days as well. The other type of divorce is the contested one, where one of the partner either doesn't want to divorce itself or doesn't agree to the terms and conditions proposed by the other partner. So what happens is, only one of the partner files for divorce individually. And this ends up taking a lot of time, maybe even years, and costing them a lot of money. And if you want the absolute best in the business, you know, the ones who represent celebrities, they can charge as high as 30,000 rupees per hearing. And apart from this, there is also something known as consultation charges. Now, consultation can be sought for discussing with your lawyer to learn how to divide your properties, how to handle child support, how to decide alimony, and so on. Now, the divorce hasn't even started yet, and the bills are already stacking up. Wait till you hear more. Now let's talk about who owns what. Let's try to understand this from a legal perspective. <laughs> First is Tridhan, meaning gifts given to the wife. In fact, any gift given to the wife at the time of her marriage and during the time that she remains married is all hers. For example, let's say that the bride's father gifts her a house when she gets married and both she and her husband are living in it. In the case of a divorce, the house is fully hers. So Streetan is not just restricted to gifts that a wife receives during her marriage. It also includes gifts such as cash, ornaments, movable and immovable property that a wife receives in the events leading up to her marriage, including childbirth. It also includes gifts that she receives from her friends and family and also from her in-laws. Sun meri baat. It's her choice. So be careful before gifting expensive stuff to your partner. Now let's talk about joint assets. Let's take the example of you and your spouse buying a house together. Now how this house gets separated in the event of a divorce is decided by the court. The court, depending on the circumstances, will make this decision. My dog stepped on a bee. No, not those kind of circumstances. But here are a few scenarios which can occur. Scenario one, let's say you and your spouse jointly own the house together, meaning both you and your spouse's name is in the agreement. In this case, the process is simple. The court simply divides the property 50-50. But you might be thinking, Sharon, I contribute more than 50% of the EMI. Shouldn't I get more? Well, in the eyes of the law, it doesn't really matter. Because if it says joint ownership, the court simply divides the property 50-50. So make sure to specifically mention how much you own in that property in the land agreement. So if you have contributed more to the EMIs, make sure that you include the exact percentage that you own in the house in the land agreement itself and avoid the word joint ownership. Let's take an example. Let's say you have contributed 80% of the down payment of the home loan and are also contributing 80% of the EMIs. So in this case, you need to clearly mention that your ownership in the house is 80% in the agreement document. Confused about how much you actually own in the house? Don't worry man, I got you. Let's get to the numbers. Suppose you bought a house worth 1 crore, out of which 25 lakh was the down payment. Let's say you paid 15 lakhs to the down payment and your spouse contributed only 10 lakhs. Home loan EMI is 60,000 rupees for the both of you. Let's say you contribute 40,000 rupees and your spouse is paying 20,000 rupees. Five years marriage went on. 
So you have paid around 24 lakhs and your spouse has paid 12 lakhs. So in total, you contributed 39 lakhs and your spouse has contributed 22 lakhs. This is including the down payment in those 5 years. So 64% of the house is yours and 36% is your spouse. Now let's assume that the price of the house has become 1.5 crores after 5 years. Now when you sell the house, the sales proceeds would be split up in the above proportion. But hold on, not so fast. There is still some loan amount left to be paid for that house. The outstanding loan amount for the house is around 39 lakhs. Even that will be split in the same proportion in which you have contributed so far. So you will have to pay 25 lakhs and your spouse will have to pay 14 lakhs to clear the loan. So the remaining amount that you're getting is 1.1 crores. Now how will you divide this 1.1 crores between you and your spouse? Now this 1.1 crores will be divided between you and your spouse in the proportion of 64% and 36%. Now let's consider scenario 2, which is quite common among people in their 40s and 50s, where the husband has bought a house in the wife's name. Marie, you bought me a house! Oh my god! A property bought by the husband in the wife's name before 2016 will be considered as a Benami transaction meaning it will be viewed as done for the purpose of tax evasion. But if it has been done before 2016, it can still be recovered. Here's what you can still do. Who owns the house if a divorce happens in this case? Well, after having a chat with my lawyer friend, this is what he has to say. Now, the person who holds the title to the property is considered the owner. For example, let's say that the property is in the name of the wife, but the EMIs are paid by the husband. Now, the husband can only recover the EMIs that he has paid with a reasonable interest but he cannot stake a claim in the property. But don't worry, all hope is not lost. In 2018, a High Court ruling stated that if the husband can prove that the property was bought with known sources of income, then this would not be considered a Benami transaction. Hence, the owner of the property would be the husband in this case and not the wife. The last scenario and the most optimal one would be to rent out the property. This is especially beneficial if the divorced couple is speculating that the property price is going to increase in that area. The rent can be split in the proportion in which they have paid the EMI. For example, let's say that you receive around 25,000 rupees rent per month. In the previous example, we calculated that your stake in the house is 64%. So your rent will also be divided appropriately and you will get around 16,000 rent per month. Now let's talk about liquid assets. So we've talked about how to divide the house and all of that. But most of you might be thinking, Sharon, come on man, I don't own a house and all. I'm just living on rent. But you definitely will be having savings account, fixed deposits, mutual fund investments. How will that division happen? The liquid assets that you own in your individual name will get affected only in the case of an alimony, which we'll talk about shortly. But if you own a joint account with your partner, then it's the same thing as owning a house. Because if you do not explicitly mention in an agreement how much you own in the joint account, then in that case, the court defaults to 50-50 split. The same with mutual funds, fixed deposits or savings account. The next important point of discussion is child support. No, we are not going to talk about the custody of the child because this is a finance channel. But we are going to talk about how your finances are going to get affected because of children. So according to the law, a man is required to provide maintenance to his child and wife after divorce. But this may not be always the case. A man provides for his family. An educated wife who is earning well may not be entitled for child support. Even if the child custody is given to the wife, a man is still required to give maintenance if the child is under 18 years of age. Also, a major child can still ask maintenance from his or her father if they are not in a position to earn themselves due to some sickness or due to some ongoing education. If you are the higher earning spouse, the court may order you to pay for the lawyers, court proceedings and monthly allowance to your spouse if he or she has insufficient income to support themselves during the case. After the divorce ends, you may still have to continue making payments to your spouse and this is called alimony. This amount is decided by the court based on several factors such as financial status, assets owned, etc. Now there are no specific formulas when it comes to calculating alimony because it varies from situation to situation. But there are some guidelines which has been laid down by the Supreme Court. In case of monthly payments, the higher earning spouse has to give around 25% of their monthly income to the lower earning spouse. And if it's a one-time settlement, then it's about one-fifth to one-third of their net worth which has to be given to the lower earning spouse. Now the alimony amount can still change as per changes in your income. This is because alimony is given with the intention that both the spouses lead the same lifestyle. So in case you get divorced and your income reduces, you can go to the court and ask for a reduction in alimony. Now from a tax point of view, it is better if the lower earning spouse receives the payment in lump sum 
because then it won't be taxable in their hands. But the person who is transferring the money in lump sum will still have to pay taxes on it because they cannot claim any deductions. So, for the person who is transferring the alimony to somebody else, it is better if they do it in monthly payments. Why? Because one day, the lower earning spouse might get remarried and at that point of time, you don't have to make those alimony payments again. That is what happened with Alan Harper in Two and a Half Men. Tonight, no more alimony. <laughs> So now you have learned everything that you need to do to protect your finances after you get divorced. But you can actually be smarter if you know what to do before even getting married. I'm smarter. I'm better. So let's now talk about the five main tips that you need to do before getting married. Tip one, you would have heard of this term called prenups. Now this is very popular in the West. A lot of celebrities use this. For example, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. Unfortunately, prenups are illegal in India. But don't worry, there's an alternative around it. Create family trust. A trust is a way where you can transfer your assets to the family trust. And you can still enjoy the benefits of all the assets that are there in the family trust. But for legal purposes, you don't earn it. So even if you get divorced, your spouse cannot come after you for those assets because it's not in your name in the first place. Tip 2. Please make a will while the divorce proceedings are happening. As we already discussed before, divorce proceedings can take anywhere from 1 to 2 years. Now if God forbid anything happens to you during this time, your assets will be divided among your legal heirs. And guess who is your legal heir? Your spouse who is contesting for a divorce with you. So during this time, please make a will and exclude your spouse from it. Or if you already have a will, make some changes to it to exclude your spouse. Tip 3. Did you know that your credit score can get affected during a divorce? Well, not directly. I'll tell you what might happen. Let's say that you have a joint loan together with your spouse. And after the divorce, let's say that your spouse forgets to make some payments. Now, because it's a joint loan, even your credit score can get affected. This is also true in case you're a co-signer in one of your loans. So make sure to exclude your name from all of these joint accounts or joint loans to protect your credit score. Tip 4. If you already have a term insurance and have ticked the MWPA Act within the term insurance. Now what is this MWPA? It stands for Married Women's Protection Act. What it states is that even if you divorce your spouse and if you die, the proceedings of the life insurance will go to the divorced spouse. So how to avoid this? Simply discontinue that old term insurance policy and buy a new one and don't include your you know, ex-wife or ex-husband in that. And the fifth and the final tip is to make sure to change the nominees in all your major investments such as mutual funds, life insurance policies, fixed deposits and so on. So in summary guys, I hope none of you ever see this kind of day in your life. It's very very exhausting both physically, mentally and financially. And if any of you ladies are going through this, my DMs are always open on Instagram and And if anyone is going through something like this, I hope you watch this video and maybe rethink your decision about getting your divorce. And if you aren't married yet, I hope you guys have learned something new to take away before you get married and protect yourself financially. Alright guys, I will see you in the next one. Until then, hit that smash, smash that like button and subscribe to my channel. Alright.